So well hi there, this is another project for me. It's a PLL FM transmitter. What is a PLL FM transmitter, you may ask? Well a FM transmitter is something you may know. This there are some one transistor circuits out there like simple one transistor FM transmitter and they are working with a so-called Colpitz oscillator. And these circuits do work, can be tuned in the FM band. But they may have the disadvantage that the frequency isn't stable due to changing battery voltage, changing temperature in the room or other, uh, let's say, things that affect the transmission frequency. How to solve that? Well, a basic idea would be to add a crystal that is in the FM band to the oscillator to make it frequency stable, but it doesn't work because at the same time where the, the crystal is holding the frequency stable, it's eliminating the modulation of the transmitter due to the fact that the uh, deviation of this uh, frequency is limited by the crystal. It's supposed to hold the frequency stable and frequency modulation means that you actually change the frequency. <laughs> so, <laughs> what to do? Yeah, there's another solution. Of course, this is already getting vintage since we are pretty much from technology view into DSP processing, digital signal processors, instead of normal PLL circuits that I have here. I think they are developing this stuff. Anyway, here is a PLL circuit. I'm using four integrated circuits. And what the circuit does is it measures the frequency from the transmitter and then it, it controls it. So if the frequency from the transmitter is changing either up or down, the PLL circuit will change it so it's always the right frequency, it's spot on frequency. And therefore it has a crystal for reference and the crystal is giving a reference frequency wherewith the transmitter frequency is compared. You will sure, you will sure know what I mean in this, if you see the schematic. A PLL transmitter starts with a reference oscillator which you can see here. It has been built around the CD4060 divider I see. And here you can also see the crystal or quartz that is used. It's a 9.289 MHz crystal which gives you a frequency of around 89.3. As you can hear I'm using that music because I don't want to get incorporated. It's just that's a really vintage CD a friend gave me. I had these kind of CDs when I was young. And I think uh, say it's in the 90s here, 1992, so it's quite vintage. And I doubt there will be copyright issues, at least I hope there aren't any copyright issues. So, um, so we have the reference oscillator with the crystal that generates a reference frequency. And that reference frequency is frequency 1, if you want to call it like that, and goes into the most important part of the PLL transmitter, which is the actual PLL chip. The PLL chip does compare frequencies, but I'll also get into that later. Because before we get into that, you have to know some other stuff. Here is the actual transmitter circuit in the middle of the screen, the VCO and the buffer. The VCO is a voltage control oscillator that generates a frequency that is variable. And the V is important here because voltage control oscillator means that you, can not, that you can not only switch the frequency with this uh, trimmer capacitor, you can also change it by adding a voltage to the input of the transmitter. There you can align it in a small value like plus minus one megahertz or so. Depending on how, you, how well you build the circuit and what parts you use, you can even cover the whole FM band just by a varying voltage and you don't need the trimmer capacitor. Then you need a buffer amp. The buffer amp um, ensures that if you connect a load to the output of the transmitter that the VCO won't get affected that much. The transmitter puts out a couple of milliwatts but I haven't connected an antenna so the range is pretty low, it just covers a few meters and I haven't connected an antenna to the radio so as you can see the radio needs to be laid very close to the transmitter. There is a circuit, usually it would be like one of these ICs, I mean the package, that divides the frequency from the FM transmitter down to the frequency that can be used by the PLL. In this case, by the way, we are talking about a few kilohertz, like I think I'm around about two kilohertz right now with the frequency that I'm transmitting on. 
But if you change the frequency, also the PLL frequency will change. And this one will stay stable, but this one will change. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, if you change the frequency, you need to change the crystal. Then you change this frequency, which will cause that this frequency changes also. But I'll get to that in a minute or so. So since these ICs were that, that I mentioned in the package, that divide down the oscillator frequency to a usable level for the PLL are quite rare and quite special. So I made one of these ICs by myself. How did I do that? I took the, I took a 80 MHz TTL oscillator that you can see here, a NE612 mixer IC, and another CD4060. Why don't you connect the oscillator frequency to the CD4060? Well, the CD4060 isn't fast enough to divide down FM radio frequencies to the CD4046. So the NE612 takes the 80 MHz from the crystal oscillator and the 89.289 MHz, <coughs> excuse me, the 89.289 MHz from the FM transmitter and calculates, if you want to call it like that, it's it's minus, it's 89.289 minus 80 MHz and there you get 9.289 MHz, which is the crystal frequency. And you get this frequency always if the PLL is locked in and everything is tuned fine. Now this frequency goes to another divider, which makes a couple of kilohertz, which is your F2, frequency 2. So what does the CD4046? Well, it's very simple. It compares two frequencies. It has the reference frequency and it has the varying frequency. And it always compares the varying frequency with the reference frequency. And if there is a difference, it changes a pulse width signal. So this IC is trying, or it's, it's successfully trying, to keep frequency 1 equal to frequency 2. For example, the VCO, as we are currently transmitting on 89.289 MHz, which is round about 89.3, the VCO is changing the frequency to like, let's say, 89.1, which is too low. As a result, through the, through the wider circuit and everything, F2 is lower than F1. But that doesn't fit. The IC wants to equal the frequencies, and so it's changing the path width to a longer pulse. So it's turning on, stays on for a while, turns off, and then it repeats always this first pulse. It always repeats this pulse. There is a so-called loop filter, since you can't put these square wave signals on the worry cap. You would only hear a very, very loud sound on the radio and it wouldn't really lock. So there's this loop filter, which is in my case a capacitor and a resistor. It's pretty much the simplest loop filter you can get, and therefore the performance ain't that good. You can still hear some PLL frequencies on the radio, but they disappear if there's modulation. Because modulation is louder, but then the uh, PLL frequency. Depends on your music. So, this capacitor now charges up it's like as if it's from a bridge rectifier, it's moving out the voltage that we get a DC voltage. Wherewith the, the IC can align the frequency from the VCO. So in our case, we are having now longer pulses. That means we have bigger voltage here. Then there's this 12K resistor, which acts as a RF, RFC, radio frequency choke, that filters out the RF from the transmitter to this loop filter. Of course, there's still some RF going over this resistor, but it's so weak, uh, it's okay. This resistor is just for stabilization. It stabilizes the circuit. So now we have a higher voltage here, which goes to the worry cap. And if the worry cap has a higher voltage, it will decrease its capacitance, which will mean that the VCO circuit is now oscillating at a higher frequency, which also means that F2 changes through to the divider. Now, this IC is doing that so long until it gets the right sign, uh, until it gets the right square wave, that F2 and F1 are equal. And then it continues with the square wave until there are any changes in the oscillator's frequency. Okay, now let's see another example. The VCO is now transmitting on a too high frequency, like on 89.4, where we don't want to transmit. Now the CD4046 is changing this square wave into a smaller size square wave. As you can see here, it's turned on just a short time and then it turns off, which means we have a lower voltage there on the capacitor. The lower voltage then goes to the worry cap, 
and the wire cap then gets a higher capacitance, which means that the VCO's frequency is going down. And guess what? The divider circuit makes a lower frequency for F2, and the IC does that so long, the CD4046 does that so long until it gets the right sides or on time in the square wave that, that F2 fits with F1, which holds the frequency stable. And here we have an audio input, which is the lazy man's version. Here is another RFC resistor. I'm modulating the worry cap that is used for tuning. Normally you don't do that, but that was pretty much my first ever made PLL transmitter. And as you can also see on this rather prototyping board, it does work. And I was too lazy to make a proper one. <laughs> So now I'll demonstrate that. I've put my meter on this capacitor here and I now will change the capacitance. I will change the capacitance to less capacitance. You will see that the voltage is dropping. Now I'll change the capacitance to bigger capacitance. Now you will see that the voltage is increasing. It's just working as I described it. Since this I see here is always regulating the frequency. And this will, just, will stay spot on around 89.3 for hours. You can run this for hours, the frequency won't change since it's PLL controlled, phase locked looped. Phase lock looped or, so, or something like that. Phase lock loop, that's the name PLL. Okay, uh, to this time, of course, ICs are getting rather complex. There's, for example, the BH 1415 SMD version, which is a good transmitter. It even has a stereo coder inside. This one's only mono. And there's the LM7000 IC, which where, where on you can connect your VCO directly and you don't need the reference divider and this stuff. Uh, you, you can connect your VCO directly, but both of these ICs have a big disadvantage in my opinion. You need a microcontroller to tell them what to do. And if you don't have a microcontroller or the knowledge to do that, these ICs are pretty much useless. In theory, you could make with a digit analog, I mean analog made with transistors or so, circuit, you could give them a digital signal, but that's so complex, just forget about it. And also, as I said, to this time, it's uh, rather developing into DSP technology. So PLL is still a use, but most of these new devices coming out are using digital signal processor uh, technology, which is of course may way more complex than this, I guess, and obviously it's better. But this is a basic PLL transmitter, which does work. The frequency you are transmitting on is calculated by the frequency from the second oscillator and the first oscillator. If you, are, if you want to reboot this and you are able to get one of these crystal oscillators at 100 MHz, I would recommend this one. Not 80, use 100 MHz. And for example, if you have 100 MHz here, 100 MHz here, 5 MHz there, you get two frequencies with this transmitter. First is 95.0, second is 105.0. If you put in, for example, 100 MHz there, 1 MHz there, you get 99.0 and 101.0. So you always calculate your frequency from this reference oscillator to there. Why don't I put in a, a 20 MHz crystal here? Well, simply because these integrated circuits aren't working too well with such high frequencies. Okay, that were the basics about PLL transmitter. Best regards, Stefan.